glad to have another opportunity to speak to you today. I also would like to point out we certainly rejoice with Robert and his choice to make the greatest decision that anyone will ever make, and that is to become a Christian. We certainly pray for you as you continue down this journey of a new life. I'd also like to thank Joshua for stealing my song. <laughs> he did a better job of it leading it than I would have, but I chose that song to... Um, illustrate what I'd like to talk to you for a few moments, and that is the challenge of contentment. Because that song really illustrates being content with the physical while still pursuing those things that are spiritual. It's a really pretty song. So I'm glad he led it, because if he didn't, I was going to. But I read one time of a man who advertised to give everyone $10,000 that could prove to him, convince him that they were satisfied with their current state of being. Well, he had many takers, as you can imagine. One by one, they filed in and they tried to convince him. Yet one by one, each of them failed to do so. For all of them could not answer the main question that he, po he posed to them. And that is, if you're so satisfied with your life, why do you want the $10,000? Not a one had a sufficient answer for that question. But this idea covers the very idea of contentment. And that is, inward satisfaction. We're satisfied with what we do possess. Jesus discussed this concept in Luke chapter, or chapter 12, verse 15, where he says, Take heed and beware of covetousness, for man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. You see, the Christian must not measure success by the physical possessions that we have. Jesus uses this verse to launch into a parable with the following verses. And at the end of it, verses 20 and 21, he asks this question. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? And verse 21 so is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. So I can be very poor in this life's possessions, but extremely rich with God. Or I can be extremely rich in this life with stuff, things that will burn up, and be extremely poor with God. And that was the point of this parable, one of them anyway. Someone can gain the entire world and yet lose their own soul. God calls this type of thinking, this man, a fool. These are foolish thoughts. Now contrast this with Hebrews chapter 13 verse 5. Let your conversation be without covetousness. And be content with such things as ye have. For he saith... I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. You know, we live in a very materialistic society. That almost goes without saying. But I'll say it anyway. It seems that Americans pride themselves in gaining, gaining more and more things that really don't amount to much. Yet, when it comes to spiritual things, we don't give a thought to them. What a terrible state to be in. Goods and stuff mean quite a bit to those who are materialistically minded. Well, just the other day I heard on the radio they, they put out certain facts that are supposedly interesting, and I thought this one was. You have the phrase, keeping up with the Joneses. 
Well, evidently the Joneses were a real couple. And they decided to, to pool their money and build the grandest house in town. Well, evidently it was so grand that all the other townsfolk decided to do the same, th the same thing for themselves. And that's where that phrase comes from. Keeping up with the Joneses. But that reminds me of another phrase that my grandfather told me. He said, God never blessed me with much money. I think he knew I wouldn't be good with it. So we might not have very much wealth in this life. But that might not be a bad thing. Because you look around with people who have large amounts of money. They're either doing wicked, wicked things. And or they're just one of the more miserable people to deal with. I don't want to be either of those. I want to be content with the things that I have. And it's a challenge because we see everyone around us that is not satisfied with a little gold and a little silver. Now we're, we're not saying that it's wrong to aspire to do better, to provide a better lifestyle for yourself and family, but when you make that your life's goal, we've crossed the line. This type of behavior, this mentality should never describe a child of God, should never describe the Christian. In light of these passages referenced, are you, ha are you satisfied with your current state? Are you content? Now, apply that question to the spiritual side of things. If you're not a Christian, I hope you're not satisfied. Because as an individual who is not saved, do you think you're going to heaven when this life is over? The Bible says no. And if you're not content, good. You shouldn't be. You need to have the foresight to look ahead. I need to change the path that I'm on. As a Christian, are you satisfied for the, the choices you've made and the lifestyle you're living? Well, obviously in light of the scriptural, scriptural teaching, if you are, great. Continue. Keep on. But if not, perhaps you've allowed sin back in your life. Perhaps you've become entangled once again with the camping grounds. Take the necessary steps this afternoon. As, as is customary, we wish to offer the invitation at this time to those who applies to. Ultimately, we know that God has promised to take care of us. We read that in Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5. But it's contingent upon us seeking after Him and His righteousness. Matthew chapter 6, verse 33. If we would be faithful, He promises to take care of us. If, it, uh, if you wish to render obedience to the gospel's call, why not come to the blood as we sang moments ago, as we sang and sing?